this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use keyframes in Adobe After Effects. Welcome back to the channel. My name is CJAM and here we are already in Adobe After Effects and I'm going to be showing you how to use keyframes in your project and let's get right into it. I'm just going to go ahead and click new project and then here we are in our main window in After Effects. If you don't have a copy of After Effects, you can check the links in this video description as to where you can get that. You can try it for free for seven days. You can buy it from Adobe's website or you can get it on amazon.com. So check those resource links in the description. So here we are, we're just gonna go ahead and create or save our project. So let's just go ahead and save as, and I'm just going to name this LSPV After Effects keyframe tutorial, right? That's all we're going to be doing today. Let's go ahead and click save, right? Okay, so now that we've saved our project, we want to create a composition that we can work in, right? So we're going to go ahead and go to composition and then new, or you could have done control and N on your keyboard, right? And let's name our composition keyframe tutorial, right? LSPV. And then you can choose your composition size. I want 1920 by 1080 pixels. I put 1080 right here. Frame rate, 30 frames per second is fine. Um, let's do a 30 second um, duration for our composition. And once you have all the settings the way you want them, the way you're comfortable with them, you can just go ahead and click OK, right? Here we are, we have our composition with a transparent background. And the first thing we want to do to give the background a color is let's go to layer and then new and then solid, or you could have hit control and Y on your keyboard. And then I'm just gonna let my background be, let me pick one of these. Well, I guess, I'm guessing white is fine. Let's just use the white for now, right? All right, here we are. Control and S to save all that we've done so far. All right, so here's my white background. And just before we go any further, to define what a keyframe is, the simplest way to think of it is an action point. A keyframe is a point on any of your elements in your timeline where you want something to happen. Sure, you can have keyframes where nothing happened, but that's the best way to think of it, right? So if you want an element, for example, a shape on your timeline to do something, you keyframe it, right? And then you can adjust whatever property of that shape to make something happen to it, right? So that's the best and simplest way to think of it. Keyframes are points of action. Um, there are other definitions, but let's just use that simple definition for the purposes of this tutorial, right? So let's go ahead and let's say, let's create a shape, right? So I'm just gonna go up top here to my tools and create a shape. Let's say we want to create a star, right? And let's just create a nice pointy star. Can you guys see all this? You should be able to see this. And then let me just adjust the color of the star. I don't want it to be white because the background is white, obviously. Um, it doesn't matter what color it is. I'm just being picky. <laughs> so there's our star. You can add a, a border if you want. Um, yeah, so there's our star, right? All right, so what if let me lock the background so it doesn't move. Here it is. Let's lock the background right there. And then now we can move our star freely. And this anchor point is not in the center. Let me just put it in the center by going Alt, Control, and Home, Command, Option, and Home if you're on Mac, I believe. <laughs> so now I can move my star with the anchor point being in the center. Let's size it down a bit by just clicking and holding one of the corners while holding Shift and just size it down. Or you could have gone down to the shape layer, hit S on your keyboard for scale and just scale it up as you see fit, right? No, my star is right here in my timeline. This is your timeline right here. Here's my star, right? Here's my star. And this is the entirety of my timeline. What if I want my star to start at the timeline off screen, right? I want it to start off screen and then I want it to come on screen like this, right? Or what if I wanted it to move from point A to point B? However you want. Remember, our keyframes are points of actions, right? So what I'm going to do to edit my position of the star because we want it to move from point A to point B or position A to position B, I'm going to hit P on my keyboard for my position controls here. And you'll see that I have some coordinates here, right? And to add a keyframe, you can click on this little stopwatch right here. And if you look over here, you'll see that the keyframe is highlighted and there's a little 
there's a little diamond right here see that and then what you can do next is you can move the star and then keyframe it but if you do that what's important with keyframes is that you have to move your playhead further down your timeline because obviously if you adjust the keyframe while the playhead is on the same point all it's going to do is override the keyframe that you had set earlier right so let me go back by hitting ctrl and z move my playhead down on the timeline further so about at the two second mark i want my i want my star to take two seconds to move from here to over here right now if i were to just go ahead and just drag the star over it would automatically add a keyframe for me because why i already moved the playhead so let me just go ahead and move the star and you see that line right there that's dragging it's telling me that that's a position animation right now if i go back to the beginning see what's happening it's already moving for me Control and s to save now let's go ahead and hit spacebar to play and see what happens see that the star is moving for me and you can get very creative with your keyframes what if i wanted my star to start very small over here and by the time it gets here it gets bigger right so let me go s for my scale feature and just size it down there is no keyframe for scale so let me click on the stopwatch you see i got a keyframe icon there now let's go to the two second mark right and then right about where did it end let me hit p to see where the keyframe end go to that exact same spot hit s again and then because when I hit P and S, it's cycling through all the, 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 the controls. Or I could hit U and it will give me all the effects that I've added, right? Now, to go on scale, I want it, by the time it gets over here, I want the star to be much bigger, right? So I want it to be about that big, right? Now let's go back to the beginning. Control and S to save and then let's press play. See that? We have four keyframes. Two for the position from point A point b and two for the scale from point a to point b you see that now what i can do is what if while the star is moving and increasing in size i want it to also rotate while it's moving right i can do that as well all i have to do is hit r for my rotation controls hit the keyframe to add a keyframe and then move down further in the time at the two second mark but let me hit you again to see where all the other keyframes are so all the changes are taking place at the exact spot now what I can do is I can just rotate. I want the star to just rotate um, like that. About 70 degrees is fine. So it will start here and then rotate all the way over. Let's control and S to save and then hit space bar to play. See that? Our star is rotating and you can do so much more with keyframes. All you have to do is know the principle and to take it even a step further, you can add some smoothness to these movements, right? All I have to do is right click on all the keyframes, highlight them, right click on them. Well, let's do the, the ones at the beginning first, then right click on them and then let's choose keyframe assistant and then let's choose easy ease, right? Easy ease will give us a nice smooth motion. Let's do that for the ones at the end as well. Right click keyframe assistant, easy ease. Then let's control and S to save and let's see what we have. See that? That way when it's easy, when it's moving, it's not just moving from point A to point B and just stop sudden. It's like moving from point A to point B and starts to slow down when it gets to point B to a more natural stop. Here's a quick tip guys. If you want to add a keyframe to an element like we just did, right? But say you want your element to end right here, but you want to start it right here or off screen, right? Once you know where you want it to end, like if I drew it on screen right here, right? But I wanted it to begin somewhere else or off screen. What I would do first, instead of adding the keyframe right here at the beginning, I would move my playhead further down in the timeline. Wait, let me delete all of these. All right. So here's my star, right? If I want it to end here, but it's beginning off screen, right? But I know I want it to end here. What I'll do is normally your playhead would be right here by default. I'd come right here. I have my element right here. I'd move my playhead further down in the timeline, create a keyframe here because I know I want it to end here. Then go back to the beginning of my timeline and then move the element off screen. That way when I hit play, 
it will start off screen and end in the exact position where I want it to end, right? So that's a tip for you guys to make note of when working with keyframes. And if you're happy with this and want to save your project, you know you go to File, and then export and you can add it to the render queue here in After Effects, but I prefer to always add it to Adobe Media Encoder queue, right? That will bring up Adobe Media Encoder and then you can you have much more control there. So you can do an MP4, MOV, whatever it is you'd like. That's how you'd export this clip for social media or your website or wherever you'd like, right? So that's all there is to it for keyframes let me know have you ever used keyframes in after effects or even in premiere pro this same concept can be applied in adobe premiere pro but you have more controls here in after effects let me know in the comments below thank you thank you so much for watching this video once again my name is c jam and i will see you guys in the next video